Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're a, a lover of kombucha like I am, uh, you'll know, probably know that the bacteria that makes kombucha taste delicious is also apparently good for you. But I've always been curious whether the ones, the drinks that I buy at the store, whether they actually contain the living bacteria. And if so, how much of it? Can you use it to create more kombucha? Let's find out. What I've got here is I've got four of the most popular ones here in Melbourne. Victoria, Australia. If yours isn't here though, you can actually do the same experiment pretty easily. Um, just follow the instructions, same thing that I do. And you can kind of find out whether that bacteria is alive in there. Um, it's pretty simple too. All we're gonna do basically is we're gonna take about 100 mils of each of the drinks and then we're gonna add it to about 100 mils of sweetened tea. Um, then we're gonna leave it for about a week, maybe more. I'm gonna see if any, all, or maybe just some of these popular drinks uh, create the actual SCOBY layer, um, which will be proof that the bacteria is living inside and uh, proof that um, there's plenty of it. So, pretty easy. Uh, I've got the, the kettle already boiled. I'm gonna pop, uh, I'm gonna add, because I've got four here, this, 400 mils of uh, hot water into this container. You can use black tea or you can use um, green tea. I'm gonna use some decaffeinated green tea here. I'm just gonna let that sit and we're gonna let that uh, cool off. While that's hot though, I'm gonna add in the sugar. What about one heaped teaspoon uh, per 100 mils? Maybe cheeky bonus one. See, the sugar is there to provide the bacteria with the food that it needs to, to ferment and, and create the drink. So, add it a little bit extra um, and we'll see how it goes. Now, we need to wait for this tea to cool off. So, I'll come back in just a sec. Try not to blow on the tea to, to, to make it cool off because you're only gonna be putting different sorts of bacteria into the tea from your mouth. So, let it cool off to room temperature and uh, we'll come back in a sec. Alrighty guys, so our tea is now cooled down to under 40 degrees, so we can go ahead and uh, mix it all up. Got this 200 ml jar here, we're gonna top up about halfway. And the other half is going to be each one of these different drinks. nailed that quantity that's good okay so the first one here is the uh, low bros so we can give it a little stir here make sure all that good stuff is mixed throughout and uh, a little bit over fizzed I reckon all right this one here is gonna be the low bros I don't think the uh, flavor really matters at this point. Topping it up almost to the top, but I'm leaving a little bit of gap just so that I can carry it around without issues. Taking a little piece of paper towel now and popping on the lid. If you don't have a fancy lid like this, you can go ahead and just use a rubber band or something like that. And of course, most importantly, I gotta label it. Okay, so that's the low bros done. Uh, so I'll go ahead and complete all the other ones and then I'll meet you back here. Okay guys, it's been two weeks. It's time to check which of our favorite kombucha drinks have enough viable bacteria to grow a SCOBY. Um, so I've got them all lined up here. I haven't touched them at all for the entire duration. I'm gonna see which one has a SCOBY to start with. And if they all do, or if some of them do, I'm gonna check to see which one's the thickest, which one's the juiciest, thereby signaling which drink has the most bacteria overall. So first of all, 
we've got the low bros here. Remember they were all, I forget the flavors exactly, I think passion fruit, most of them. Yeah, okay, so you can see really there's, there's a little bacteria in this one. And that appears to be the right type of bacteria just by looking at it like it's, yeah, that, that definitely smells, smells like kombucha bacteria. Hmm, that's not a lot. So you can see that the uh, scoby is about that big. That's it. I don't know if you can see that. All right, let's put that one back. I was hoping to have this plate so I could see if there's a, a thicker one, hopefully, and, and test the differences. But uh, let's have a look at this one now. All right, so this one here is the, what is it? The Remedy one. Whoa, we have a nice, thick, scoby that's formed on this one that's really good floating around let's try and whip it up here so we can have a look at it yeah nice okay so you can see here that it's quite thick i'm gonna lay it down here on the on the left just in front behind the jar so that hopefully we can pull another one of these out and kind of compare the thickness a little bit but that's that's surprising. I didn't think the remedy one would have uh, would have such a big amount of bacteria in it, but apparently that's the case. All right, opening up the next one here. This is the next bar, and that's completely bare. Look at that. There's no scoby in there whatsoever. Nothing. There's a little bacteria down the bottom of the jar. I don't know if you can see that really, but. Wow, that's, that's pathetic. That tells me that like all of those times that I drank a Nexpa kombucha, I probably wasn't doing anything healthy. All right, last one here is the Mojo. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, hang on. Here's another nice thick one. Really nice thick kombucha on that. Whipping that out. Let's have a look at it. Oh, that's so nice and leathery. And it's almost the same thickness as the Remedy. I'm actually really surprised by this result. The Remedy one is slightly thicker. The Mojo is really, really nice and solid too though. Either one of these two drinks I'd say are really great for you. I can also see that the Remedy one is much less cloudy. I don't know if that's any indication of potential bacteria that's sitting there or maybe that's just like remnants of the fruit. So I think, um, I think that's pretty clear. I'm gonna pop these scobies back in. There we go. So there you have it. The uh, Remedy and the Mojo. Fantastic kombucha, it's got lots of bacteria. The Low Bros has some, but it's very slow to grow a scoby. And the scoby that it, it, it grew in two weeks was pretty pitiful, didn't even feel a layer. And lastly, the next book, Completely useless drink. Um, that's it.